All right, uh, last night we did get a ball face hornet nest at a buddy's house, and we froze it here for about a day. Um, this is going to be the one right here. We're going to take it over on a sorting table. And just kind of take a poke inside here. These old pine boughs are always a kind of a pain to go through, but kind of go with saps everywhere. Okay, so there's that nest that we got out last night. We just kind of cracked that open. A lot of really nice comb. What's all that white stuff? So this is um, this is comb that they make. Uh, big nests have about two, three, sometimes four of these tiered combs like this. And uh, you can see right here, it's different stages of the larva. Some are very, very small, and some are ready to be capped over. And then these obviously were all capped over, and they're ready to um, hatch. Uh, the hatching cycle is about, you know, it's maybe three weeks before all of this white um, all this white capped over cells hatch you can see one right here that's starting to come out I just pulled that off right there this was a this was a queen I cracked crack this open a little bit let's see you can see the different um, let me pull them out of here you can see this one is you know you can see it's insect looking. That's a queen. It's just missing the black color, but it's definitely past the grub stage. Okay, you see that? Um, this nest is going to have several different kinds of insects in it. There's going to be some drones. That's a drone right there. It's got the long antennas. It has an empty abdomen here with no stinger. And then you're going to have a worker, similar in size, but this does have a stinger here. Um, and then I'm sure I can find a queen. Yep, here's one. You can see how, how large she is. And a nest like this, you can see, it starts out with one queen, but you can see what's happening here. They manufacture several, sometimes up to 100 or more queens. There's a third one. Okay, and this is nice because... These queens weigh a little bit more, and, and that obviously is a is good because we send out these insects by the pound to these different labs. Uh, like I said before, I work for a couple different labs. They extract the venom and treat allergy patients and immunotherapy. So these uh, workers in the queens have the venom, and the drones do not. So we have to sort these out, throw them away. And then, of course, this is always a pain to get this away from all the insects. It's got to look, you know, just like insects in a bag for this lab that we supply. So we got to clean it up make it look nice and uh, so we go from there I do have some insects in the freezer that have already been bagged uh, this was from a this was from an earlier ball face hornet nest that we did okay so these are all good these are all good hornets that have venom in this bag oh actually that is a drone somehow snuck in there. Not perfect, I guess. Um, so that is, uh, these are all gonna be shipped out to this lab. So, and we, uh, we have orders for, you know, multiple pounds of these. These are bald face, and we also have uh, yellow hornets that we do. Um, they're, they're slightly different. Is this a big one or a small one? This is a pretty good size. I mean, uh, it's, you know, it's bigger than a basketball. There's a lot of queens in it. Uh, this was a very healthy bald face hornet nest, as you can see. Uh, it has plenty of drones, not too many though. It has a lot of queens and a ton of workers. So this is a very well balanced bald face hornet nest. So this would be very successful if I wouldn't have taken it out of the tree uh, for next year for those queens to, you know, start new nests in the following summer. Uh, so what I have to do here is I, you know, I just have to take this comb here. I just kind of give it a little tap. Okay, and this is kind of a, a tedious job here. I have to sit here 
and you know pull out the ones that don't shake out now I've got an eye to see these drones so a lot of them I don't have to pull out I can just leave in there so okay it looks like the rest of those might be drones so all right so I just kind of just kind of sort them I get all that garbage out you know you learn to get kind of fast over the years okay so we just sort this get a little pile going here blow that debris out yeah this is a really good size nest okay once we get the dirt out then I kind of like to just go through them and start sorting the drones out so those are workers workers these are workers workers there's a drone I'm gonna put that over there don't want that drone here drone here I can identify by the whiskers and the and the lack of a stinger okay so these are good good those are some queens those are some workers got to really be careful to get those drones out because this lab that we work for they will deduct us if we have too many drones in each bag so um, there's another worker a lot of good bees in here okay there's a all right I'll just kind of take a, a minute to kind of show you the difference between a queen and a and a worker obviously much larger heavier okay that you can see there's a lot of queens in this nest Okay, you can see there's there's three queens right there. Okay, these are the drones we got to pull out. Okay, their job is to fertilize the queen. Uh, that's their only job. And uh, you know they after they do that they just kind of vacate the nest and end up dying. So uh, that's a drone, long antennas. Okay, no stinger. Workers, you know they're building the nest, they're working on it. They're uh, they're scouts. They they uh, they're they defend the nest. They go out and sting people if they bother it. Um, and of course, the queens, they uh, their job is to you know reproduce the following year. So that's a little bit about the insects. Um, I would say this nest is probably split almost into thirds. I would say probably a third of it are drones, a third probably workers, and a third are going to be queens. I mean, just looking at it. Like again, I said this is a very healthy nest, and I'm pleased with it. Uh, but every hive is different. Is every right? hive is different. Yep. Some some hives have way too many queens with the lack of drones, and they're not really going to be that successful the following year, uh, for obvious reasons. But uh, then you get a nest that um, is really big, and you get excited. You're like, whoa, this is this is awesome, and you open it up. There's no queens at all. Uh, just a few workers, and it's just loaded with drones. So something happened to the the original queen or or whatnot. And uh, that nest is, you know, ultimately going to fail in the end. It's not really going to, you know, produce anything for the following year. And then you get, you know, a smaller nest and you're like, oh, man, this is not going to be good. This isn't going to weigh much. But actually inside the nest, you got a lot of workers and queens and, uh, you know, a good amount of drones. And so you're pleasantly surprised even with a smaller nest. Um, so you just every every nest a little bit different. And obviously getting to the nest, it's always a different situation as well. So. We just kind of take it as we go and figure it out, and we stay busy collecting these hornet nests. All right, it's called weigh-in day. It's the most exciting part of, uh, of yellow jacket collecting. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of time involved, a lot of blood, uh, blood sweat, and tears. And uh, this guy right here, man, he's the man. He's uh, my brother Trent, and he does a lot of leg work, pushes a lot of pounds of yellow jacks. Not easy work, but this is the fun part. We weigh in here, we see exactly what we got for the day. Okay, very important that we have dry ice on the insects to keep them frozen. The only way they can die is by freezing. They can't suffocate, they can't, uh, you know, the only way to kill them is to, to directly put them on ice or in the freezer. So that's how they have to die to preserve that venom. Very important for these laboratories to have this venom uncontaminated uh, and not spoiled. So dry ice does a really good job. This guy really needs to wear gloves, but we're still working on him with that one. All right, so that's right here. This is Germanica. Okay, this is a yellow jacket, this most common yellow jacket. In Michigan, at least, that we come across. My little play, my little play toy here. Very important tool of the trade. Nest. That's about a six ounce. That's pretty nice. Get all that air out. Put it in my 
bag here. So why are you keeping them cold right till the last second? Just uh, so that <clears throat> so they don't thaw out on us. Go right from here into the freezer. Go from the go like from that. the freezer back to the lab on dry ice again. So. All right. Anytime you fill up a quart size bag, that is a special nest. That's about a ten ounce nest. That's out of somebody's house. That's hundreds and hundreds of insects in that person's house. Probably stationed in their wall cavity or up in their attic. It's a real pain in the rear. They do a lot of drywall damage too. Well, a lot of times these Germanica, you see them coming and going, these yellow jackets coming and going out of somebody's soffit or like, you know, a crack in their siding or whatever. And you can, you can beat until the cows come home. They're not coming out. But on occasion, you can get them to come out and play. If the nest is like within maybe a foot of that entrance hole, then they come out. They're very vicious. They spit, you know, they spit venom in your eyes. They, they, they get their abdomen on your veil and you taste venom on your face and lips. It's terrible. But it's kind of cool because you get so much more. If you can get them to come out you poke a hanger in there or beat the beat the side sometimes they come out all right this right here was from poking a nest right there this all came out after you started poking it yeah. this is brian's yep. yeah i think i'll be able to fit in one bag mm -hmm. i mean i see you're already sorted and everything so i i set a vacuum on it um, if it's cool, I'll set it out for an hour and a half. If it's hot, uh, you can't do it much more than an hour. Then I'll come back, I'll unhook my trap, uh, use the CO2 again to put them to sleep and put them in these white boxes that you see. Um, and then they just go right on the ice from that box. Quick and painless, huh? Yep, it goes pretty quick. So this is one nest. We'll see what this is. Yeah, yeah. You see that? Oh my word, that's almost a pound. That's almost a pound. One pound of yellow jacket Germanica in somebody's house. And it happened to be a buddy, so that works out great. He's a happy camper. That's no longer in his house. <laughs> All right, that's a good right. nest, man. Overall, I mean, over the years, what's, what's like the biggest nest you've ever had? Uh, my, is that right up there? my record for Germanica in somebody's house and I had to constantly change the canister because they were just filling up that canister trap so fast. Was not too far off that. It was a pound and, and two ounces, so it was a it was a big haul for me. Man, I would have stuck around if I would have known it was point two from a pound. What do you got there? All right, so this is uh, this is an Eastern Yellow Jacket. Macula fronds is a scientific name. Uh, you find these mostly in the ground, and they're really a pain, especially for the guy mowing. Uh, they don't tolerate you very much and they're very mean and aggressive and one thing about these that are different than the Germanica is when they get on you they will find a way to sting you they will find a way to get in your suit the Germanica fly at you and they keep flying at you but these ones will find you and just crawl until they can get you and I, their sting is horrible I, I don't prefer it over the Germanica let's just say that okay that's it right there three three gallon sized bags of Germanica for one day's work. This guy's a machine, I told you. He knows how to collect bugs. All right, so I'm gonna count these out. One, two, three, four, five, okay. We gotta subtract bag weight so we can have an accurate reading of what poundage we're sending to these labs. So, so there's five there, okay, plus the gallon size. That's 0.4 ounces of weight taken off of that. One, two, three, four here. This guy is kind of bulky. I can get some air out of that. All right. One, two, oh my word. That's four and a half. That's four and a half pounds of Germanica. That's a huge day. Um, congrats, Trent. That's fantastic. <laughs> Here, why don't you give me some of that? <laughs> How many miles on the car? I don't know, about 350 maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to put these back in. So you have got to minus that bag weight from those three. So that's your bag weight on yep, the 3.6, so we're just minus them from that. So 4 pounds, 4.1 of Germanica. That's a good day. Okay, there are five 
you know, basically major species of yellow jacks that we collect here in mid-Michigan. Um, I'm just going to name them. Uh, there's Germanica. There's going to be the Macula fronds, Flavopalusa. There's going to be the Squamosha bee and the Alicensis bug. Now, out of those five, I've got four on the table. I'm going to show you each one of them and the difference. And the reason that I got to collect all of them is these labs have created a, a cocktail of venom, if you will, um, to accommodate uh, you know, an individual who is allergic to yellow jackets thing. So if they're allergic to Germanica and they take this cocktail of, of, um, of this venom serum, then it's going to actually help them have a mild reaction instead of a severe. And you, you know, the Germanica, you know, might be like 40% of this cocktail and the Macula fronds could be like 20%. So mixed all together, it should cover you if you get stung by a yellow jacket. Okay. So down here, we have uh, the first one is the macula fronds. Okay, insect right there um, has a black tip on its on its stinger on the front end of its abdomen. On the back abdomen, it has almost uh, looks like a well, it kind of looks like an arrowhead on the back of his abdomen. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's right there. Okay, moving on to the next one. This is a really cool bug. This is really a down south Georgia bug, but some for some reason. They have moved their way up to Michigan. And this abdomen is just really stripy. Okay, and actually the front of it, of his head there, looks like a Michigan Wolverine helmet. Moving on to the next one, this is the Germanica. Okay, this is the German yellow jacket. Super yellow, super yellow. And they have a diamond on the back of their abdomen. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then the very last one, and we don't get a lot of them, but we certainly do get some, is the Flavopalooza. If you can see this, if I don't know if your camera can pick it up, but they're hairier. Okay, they have little hair fibers sticking out on their abdomen and their um, in their thorax, and also their marking on the back of their abdomen looks like a home base. That's how I can tell them apart, and they're not quite as yellow as the Germanica. So there you go. You got all four out of the five species of yellow jackets that I've collected, um, and this will help an allergy patient that it has a severe reaction to a yellow jacket sting this i mean they'll be covered if any of these hit them so this is good